Hello my friends, Amy Esther here with another video for you and today we are talking about how to treat postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome or POTS. If you are watching this, I assume you either have POTS, you know someone who has POTS, or maybe you suspect you have POTS. And I wanted to talk to you about how to treat it. I personally have POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is a form of dysomnia that causes the blood not to circulate well. And I have an entire video about all about POTS, where I teach you what exactly it is, the symptoms, all of those things. So I will link that down below if you want more information about POTS. But if you're watching this, I'm going to assume that you already know the basics about POTS, and we're just going to talk about how to treat it. So the treatment I'm going to share with you today is all natural. These are things you don't need a prescription for. You don't need to talk to your doctor about them. Um, of course, you can talk to your doctor before you start any of these treatments, but you don't need a doctor to prescribe you anything in order to, to do these treatments. Most of them are just very simple, easy lifestyle changes that personally for me have changed my life. And of course, I still feel symptoms of POTS every single day. It doesn't take away POTS. It doesn't cure POTS, but they treat it and they help you to feel better. And especially if you're having a bad day, you can do some of these things and you will feel so much better. So I wanted to share with you the natural treatment for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. If it's your first time here, I'm Amy Esther and I have POTS, like I said, and I also have several other chronic illnesses. Um, I have links down below of information about all the chronic illnesses I have and the whole list of things that are going on in my body. And as many of you probably know, it's not easy to get a POTS diagnosis. So for me, it took me a little while to get diagnosed with POTS, but once I did and I started treating it with these natural treatments, oh my goodness, I'm feeling so much better. And of course, because of the other issues that I have going on, um, the stomach issues and I have fibromyalgia and some just lots of different things. You can learn about them all over my channel or on the links below. Um, because I have a lot of things, there's a lot of treatments that I have to do. But honestly, some of these things work for multiple of my chronic illnesses. And so I feel like this treatment plan is huge if you have POTS and even if you have other things going on with your POTS. These are things that will help you to feel better. So I actually already have a video on my channel where I share POTS treatment. And the reason I'm redoing this video is because it was one of my very first videos. I think it was my third video and it was terrible. If you ever want a good laugh and you're bored, head to my channel and scroll to the very bottom, watch some of my first videos. I just watched this one today just because I wanted to see what I'd said in that video, if I would miss anything that I'd written my notes here. And I was so awkward and uncomfortable and the lighting was bad and the sound was bad. And so that's why I'm doing this video again for you because I get a lot of questions about the treatment of POTS and I'm almost a little embarrassed to share that video, but I'm not gonna delete it, so if you wanna watch it, you can. But we are gonna make this video one more time because it's just, you live and learn, right? I've just gotten so much better at this YouTube thing since I started this. It was not my best. So let's talk about how to treat POTS naturally. So first of all, I want to recommend a few resources for you, um, which is there's a book. I will post it right here because I forgot to bring it with me, but I have a book about dysanonymia and it's really great. It shares um, half the pages are about patients. Half of them are for, uh, not about patients. Half of them are for patients. Half of them are for doctors. And so it's just really good information about living with dysanonymia. So that's a really good resource if you're looking for more information about treating it um, and all those things. It also talks about some drugs that you can take if you're interested in taking drugs for your POTS. It talks about it in that book, as well as dysanonymiainternational.com.org. Ooh, I don't know. I think it's .org, but I will link it in the description below. That's a really good resource as well. They even have conventions. I've gone to the conventions here. I live in Utah. They have a convention in Utah every September, and I've gone to it. I went to it once, and I wish that I would have gone to it last year too, but I will definitely be going this year if they do it again. And it's, it's just great to be surrounded by people who have POTS, and you learn so much information from the experts, from doctors and people from the Mayo Clinic and, and people who know a lot about POTS. So that's a really good resource. 
So you can get a lot more information on that website about all things dysanomia. And there's a whole section about POTS. So if you're interested in more information there from the experts, um, that is there. I also feel like I'm an expert. So they are experts as in their doctors. I'm an expert as in I live with this every day. <laughs> so let me share with you my expert advice of how to treat POTS all natural. So the first thing you have to have if you have POTS is compression socks. So you guys, I wear, they're technically prescription strength, but I have found a website. I know I said you didn't need a prescription and I'm sticking to that because I found a website where you can order them directly from the company that makes them and you don't need a prescription. So if you buy them from your local pharmacy, you need a prescription to get the tightest socks, which are 30 to 40 MMHG. I have no idea what MMHG means. I should probably look that up, but it just means how tight they are. So the, the bigger the number, the tighter the socks. So if you get 10 to 20, they are not quite as tight. Those are ones that people who maybe like runners would wear. And then 20 to 30 would people maybe with like varicose veins and, um, and maybe less severe pots would wear 20 to 30. But for me, I wear 30 to 40, which is the tightest ones you can get. And if you don't want a prescription, I will leave the link down below of the ones that I get. In the summer, I like to wear the toeless ones because we're gonna talk about this in a minute, but heat can really make your pots worse. So they have some that don't have toes and I'm wearing those right now actually. And it is May as I'm recording this video. So we're getting to the hottest months and I'm actually pregnant while I'm making this and I'm due in August. So I'm gonna be hugely pregnant through the summer and I have pots. So I definitely need the toeless socks because I just get way too hot. Um, during the winter, I typically wear the ones that cover my toes because then it's easier to go out places because I can just put boots on or whatever and I don't have to put an extra pair of socks on. In the summer, I wear the toeless ones and if I do need tennis shoes or something, I'll just put regular socks over the top so that I don't have that, I don't know. I don't wanna get like fungus or gross stuff from not wearing my socks fully covering my feet. <laughs> um, but usually I will just wear some kind of like flip flop or something if I'm just you know running an errand. Anyway, I love the toeless ones. I also like to wear cheaper ones when I exercise. So we'll talk about exercise in a minute, but when I exercise, I typically wear just the cheap ones from Amazon. I try to get the tightest ones I can, which is typically 20 to 30 M. And cause the more expensive ones, they can run anywhere from $30 to $100 per pair. Um, and so I'll buy cheap like running socks that um, are 20 to 30 on Amazon. And I'll link the ones that I get down below as well. And those are a lot cheaper. And so I don't feel as bad if I get them all sweaty, if I'm exercising. And then they're also a lot easier to get on. And so because I'm changing a few times when I'm exercising, I think it's helpful to just have the cheaper ones. Um, and if I'm having a flare up, I don't like to wear the cheap ones at all, but just for a little like day-to-day -day exercise, if I'm not having a flare up or anything, I typically wear the cheap ones. For the rest of my day, I always wear the more expensive tight ones. I wear them every single day. And actually when I went to my POTS conference um, a few years ago, I guess it's a dysanatomy conference, um, but when I went to that a few years ago, I had people at my table who said, they had compression socks, but they didn't wear them every day. Now, I know everyone's body is different. Everyone's pots might be a little bit different. And some people might help more. Some people might not help as much. But the reason they told me they didn't wear their socks, they said they're too hard to get on. To me, this is like not checking your insulin when you have diabetes or taking your medication when you have something that requires a medication because it's too hard. But really, if you get used to it and you do it every single day, it's not that hard. I put mine up on every morning and yeah, they're hard to get on, but when you're used to it and you, it's just part of your routine, you just, it becomes part of a normal life. Like to me, it's just normal to put my socks on. I don't get out of bed without socks on. I will not get out of bed even to brush my teeth even to go to the bathroom, I will not get out of bed if I don't have my socks on. The only exception would be if it's the middle of the night, I don't wear them to sleep. That's the only time I'm not wearing them is sleeping and um, showering. And in the middle of the night, I will kind of like crawl to the bathroom if I need to, just because that's kind of a pain if all I'm doing is going to the bathroom, going to bed. But in the morning, if I'm doing anything, I put my socks on immediately. And to me, I know I'm talking a lot about socks, 
but this I just feel like they are the most important part of your treatment is wearing socks and I don't understand why people with pots that don't wear them every day like I cannot get out of bed if I don't wear my my socks so I'm interested if you guys have them and don't wear them can you tell me why like in the in the comments below let me know why you don't wear them I'm really curious because to me it's just my medicine like I just cannot get out of bed without my socks on so compression socks friends is that clear you need compression socks if you have pots you need to wear them every day okay the next thing we have is water increase your fluid so when I hear people talk about pots they're always like oh drink Gatorade and drink these things that have electrolytes and and get you hydrated I don't recommend doing that so I would recommend drinking lots of water and electrolytes but don't use sugary or fake sugary drinks so I would avoid Gatorade and um, Powerade and those kinds of things because those can have the negative side effects too of the sugar and the fake sugar that's in them. I would just get yourself some pure electrolytes and put it in your water. So this is what I do. I will link the ones down below that I use. Um, it's called Light Show and it's just straight electrolytes and I just pour some drops into my water and I mix it with this um, vitamin C drink, which helps me a lot with my pots as well and helps my immune system. And so it is, it sort of tastes like Gatorade, but it's a lot better for you um, because the electrolytes do taste really salty. One time I thought it was a good idea to have them plain. Not a good idea, they're very salty. <laughs> um, but when you mix it with this, it basically tastes like Gatorade, but it's much better for you and doesn't have all that crap that is in Gatorade. So. A lot of people have suggested using stuff like that, but I seriously would suggest just using straight electrolytes and just putting them in your water. So drink lots and lots of water and electrolytes all throughout the day. I just have a big water bottle that I take with me everywhere. I always have it. It's like my socks, right? People don't bring their water bottle because they feel like it's obnoxious or annoying. I'm like, no, this is my medicine. I bring my water wherever I go. And then as with salt, a lot of people recommend taking salt pills when you have pots, which I'm not against them. Totally take them if you need them. To me, I just salt my food a lot. I just dump salt on everything that I eat. I've always liked salt, and especially once I developed pots, I crave salt a lot. And so to me, I have a very, like my taste buds, they like the salt. And so I just got my taste buds used to eating lots of salt, and now I just salt my stuff a ton. So what I do when I make dinner is I don't salt anything, and then we just have salt on the side. And I salt my stuff a ton. My husband might put a little bit on his, and so I just add extra salt to everything. If I go out to a restaurant, I just add extra salt. So to me, I don't ever need salt pills because I just salt my food enough that it's enough for me. But if you don't like salt or you have a hard time getting your salt intake, then definitely you can try some salt pills. I don't have any recommendations for them because again, I don't use them. I just eat a lot of salt. And then I make sure whenever I have a lot of salt that I have a lot of water with it. So I wanna make sure those combine together. Before I got diagnosed with POTS, I would crave salt, but I thought it was bad for me, and so I would try to hold off on salt and just drink a ton of water, but that didn't make me feel better because the water would just go right through me. The salt is what keeps your body holding on to that water, but then if you do the opposite and you have too much salt and not enough water with the salt, then your body is just retaining the water it has, but it's not getting the new water and getting more blood in your system. So you need to have salt and water or, or electrolytes and water together. Um, try to not just do water or just do a lot of salt. You wanna have both of them together to work together in harmony with your body. Okay, the next thing is to avoid any triggers. Now, I think we all kind of have our own triggers, but the ones that are most common are heat, the sun, sugar, stress. Those are the ones that I hear the most common sleep is another one. Those things to me, from what I've heard from people with POTS are the most common triggers of a POTS flare up. So heat especially, heat is really hard. I actually have a video coming out soon about my heat intolerance kit. All the stuff that I keep in my heat intolerance kit, basically what I use in the summer, all the stuff 
that I use to keep my body cool. So I will have that video coming out. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Um, or if you're watching in this in the future, you can just go search and find that video. But heat is a huge trigger for POTS, um, as well as the sun. So what I've noticed for me is I think, okay, heat makes me sick. So I'm gonna go get in a pool and then I'll be fine because I'm cool the whole time. But the sun is also a trigger. And so even though I'm not hot, the sun hitting my skin, what happens when the sun hits your skin, especially if you're pale skin like me, is blood comes to the surface of your skin and that's how you get pigment, that's how you get tan and sunburn and stuff. And so it pulls blood here, which is why it makes you so sick, is because all the blood's being pulled to the surface of your skin and not going where it needs to go. And we need our blood to circulate as best as possible when we have POTS because it does not work like normal people. Um, and so there are people, like normal people who don't have POTS can get sick from being in the sun too long, right? It's the same thing, but for us, it happens a lot faster. So I avoid the sun as much as possible. In fact, I'm inside a lot of the summer. Now, I still have a lot of activities that I've found to do. I have a toddler and another one on the way. So I definitely need to find things to do with my kids. Um, but like, I will go to an indoor pool instead of going to an outdoor one. There are definitely things you can do. So I would avoid the sun and any heat if possible. Um, or having something to cool you down. Maybe having an ice pack when you're... Um, when you're going to someone else's house and you don't know how hot it will be because some people keep their houses a lot warmer than i do um and so you definitely want to cool your body down as much as possible so avoid those triggers um also avoid stress is another trigger that can trigger you to have um some major pots symptoms and it's hard right like it's almost impossible to avoid stress altogether, but just try to find some stress coping mechanisms. So maybe you need um, a counselor, maybe you need meditation or yoga, maybe you need a life coach. Fun fact, I'm a life coach and I have a program where I teach you basically how to be happy while you're living with chronic pain. I teach you why pain isn't a problem um, if you're interested in that and you need a life coach, I will link that down below and you can learn more about my program. But um, that's one of the things I focus on is decreasing that stress that you get just from day-to-day -day stuff. So any way you can decrease stress would really help. And then sleep, try to get good sleep. I know it's really hard. A lot of us have insomnia. Um, in fact, if you guys want some videos about insomnia, because I have struggled with that a lot and found some things that help me. If you want a whole video on that, please leave me a comment below and let me know because I will totally make that for you. Um, but try, try, try to get better sleep if possible so that you can avoid some of that and any other triggers that you might have personally maybe you have certain things um maybe it's your anxiety maybe it's your depression maybe um it's being in a big crowd of people i don't know whatever your trigger is try to avoid that okay next thing is exercise all right <laughs> if you've heard anything about pots you probably heard that exercise is a way to treat pots and you're sitting there in pain, dizzy, feeling like you're gonna pass out if you stand up, and you're like, what? How can exercise be the treatment? I can't even get out of bed. I remember feeling that way <laughs> back in the day. And now I am 100% pro exercise for POTS. So I have an entire video called How to Exercise with Orthostatic Intolerance, um, which if you don't know what orthostatic intolerance is, it's what happens to us when we have POTS basically means when we stand, we get symptoms. Orthostatic means a standing position. So lactose intolerance, when you eat lactose, you get symptoms. Orthostatic intolerance, when you stand, you get symptoms. So anyways, that's what orthostatic intolerance is. So I have an entire video on that, how to exercise. But let me tell you just kind of like the quick version, which is weight lifting, my friends lift weights a lot of people say do lay down exercises like the recumbent bike and stuff i personally i wouldn't say like it's had negative effects on me but i feel a lot better when i lift weights than i do any kind of cardio exercise so to me strength exercises is number one when it comes to exercising with pots i would avoid cardio as much as possible um I used to think that going on walks was really good for me because 
mentally, I feel amazing when I go on walks. I crash every single time. <laughs> every time I go on a walk, I crash. Um, but also with the, the the sitting bike thing. I don't know what it's called. The, I don't know. The sitting, like, sitting exercises that are cardio, to me, don't help me as much as lifting weights. So I recommend doing weightlifting over any type of cardio. And I've heard some expert POTS doctors say the same thing, to avoid cardio as much as possible, stick with weight training, because not only does lifting weights help get blood up to that part of your body while you're lifting them, but it helps all day long, because the more muscle you have on your body, the more blood gets circulated to that place because you have more muscle. So definitely try to lift weights. And it's gonna be hard because you're not gonna feel good. And your brain will tell you, this doesn't make sense. Why should I exercise right now when I feel terrible? But I promise when you get in the habit of it and you do it every day, you will feel better. So the first few days, it might be kind of hard. It might feel kind of impossible, but do it sitting down. Just lift some weights sitting down. Um, do it for 10 minutes for the first couple weeks and then go to 20 minutes and then go to 30 minutes, whatever you can do. I personally don't use exercise more than 30 minutes a day um, because any more than that, it just seems to make me feel worse. So, but when I started out, I had to start really small. I, you could even start with five minutes a day. Just lift weights for five minutes a day. I promise as your body gets stronger, it will help you to feel better. And again, you're not, your brain is going to tell you like you're in so much pain. This doesn't make sense. Just try it. I have people tell me this all the time and I'm like, just try it. And then they're like, I can't do it. They just tell me they can't. No, you can do it. I promise you can. I've been there. I know it hurts. I know that you feel dizzy and you feel really sick. Just try it. Try it for me work up to 30 minutes a day after you work up to 30 minutes a day then come talk to me and tell me it's not working i promise you that it will work work out as much as you can i promise 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 it will work i know you think i'm crazy but do it my friend do it okay next one is diet so what do you eat when you have pots now, some people say eat a healthy diet. Some people say you have to eat this certain diet. You have to eat this certain diet. I would recommend a lower carb diet because when you eat carbs, so for example, you eat a big bowl of spaghetti, your digestive system requires a lot of blood to digest that food. So you probably have noticed this, or if you haven't, you will start to notice it after you watch this video. If you eat a lot of carbs in one sitting, you probably will feel sick soon after. And it's because all of your blood is going into that digestive system. I learned from a doctor actually at my POTS conference a few years ago that up to a third of your blood supply can go to the digestive system to digest a lot of carbs. A third of your blood, you guys, that's a lot of blood. So if a third of your blood, when you're already, you have low blood volume and you have a hard time circulating your blood, when all of that goes to your digestive system, it's gonna make you feel worse because the rest of your body's not getting what it needs. So I highly suggest staying low carb and if you, and any carbs you eat, make them vegetables. So any kind of like starchy carb is going to probably make you feel worse. So I personally feel best on a paleo or a keto diet. Um, and from what I've heard of other people with POTS, from what I've heard of experts, most people would recommend the same thing um, because of that blood supply issue and moving your blood through your system and the way your blood goes to the digestive system when you eat a lot of carbs. So I highly suggest eating a paleo or a keto diet. At least try to be very low carb, very low starchy carb. Eat more vegetables. If you're gonna eat carbs, stick with vegetables and fruits um, and, and really try to avoid like pastas and breads and those really heavy, dense carbs because it will make you feel a lot worse. Okay, you guys, my last little tip goes along with sleep. So we talked about trying to get better sleep. One thing that you may have already noticed when you sleep 
or when you lay down, I should say, when you lay down is that if you lay down completely flat, if this is your head and this is your legs, sorry, I'm got my, whatever. Anyways, this is your head and this is your legs. If you're completely flat, you feel like you're upside down. Does that happen to you guys? That definitely happens to me. And I, I figured this out before I even knew I had POTS. When I lay down completely flat, I feel like I'm standing on my head, like all my blood is up in my head. So whenever you lay down, you wanna have your head just a little bit elevated. So options are you could get a couple pillows. Maybe instead of having one pillow at night, you have two pillows at night. Um, or you could get one of the incline pillows. That's what I did for a long time. I used to just have one of those incline. Now I have an adjustable bed where I can raise my head and I actually also raise my feet. So I would suggest sleeping like this. Like seriously, this is your butt. This is your knees right here and your legs and then your head, yeah? So if you could sleep like that, it feels so much better. So not to like force you to buy, to spend a bunch of money, but if you have the money, I highly suggest getting yourself an adjustable base bed. It has been one of the best purchases I've ever made. I feel so much better when I lay down on that bed. Go to a mattress store and just try one out. You will feel the difference, it's amazing. So I sleep with my <laughs> legs up and my head up just a little bit. Um, and it helps a lot um, but if you can afford it just get a pillow get a wedge pillow for your head um, get a pillow for under your feet and and you can kind of make that shape for yourself um, you can also get one of those big pregnancy pillows those help a lot um, but sleeping with your head up will help you to feel a lot better when you sleep it'll help you feel more rested when you sleep so that's my last big tip for you if you guys have any more natural treatments that you guys do for your pots, will you leave those in the comments below? If you have any more questions for me about pots or any other videos you would like me to like to see made about pots, definitely leave me a comment below because I'd love to make stuff that you guys enjoy and that is helpful for you. That is why I created this channel. If you are new here, please subscribe to my channel. You don't wanna miss all the videos that I make. I make content multiple times a week for you about life with chronic illness, how to do all the things while you're living with POTS and several other chronic illnesses because a lot of us have a lot of other problems because POTS is typically a secondary condition and it goes along with a lot of other things. So if you are living with POTS and any other chronic illness, make sure you subscribe to my channel. You do not wanna miss any of the content that I bring for you. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time.